37. Now, I'm, I so hope uh, you'll get the right uh, I mean, I know screen. In a depression in the mountains. But if you don't, I'm going to have to give up. It's, right around there. Okay. it's the same screen. Mm -hmm. Big time. <laughs> okay, what are you all seeing now? Uh, uh, same screen. Yeah. Same screen. GT cars, which are grand touring. Just stick with the two screens. You can do it. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, good. Whew. All right. Uh, here we go. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, and so now um, I want to have an opening statement here, what I'm not going to talk about. So um, there, there are these uh, three topics that I'm not going to talk about. Um, uh, the uh, uh, first one is um, uh, Ukraine, and uh, there's uh, uh, everybody's talking about a possible screen of uh, 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 offensive, spring offensive. We'll we'll, we'll see. Um, th the other thing I'm not going to talk about is um, the uh, oh boy oh boy. Got another problem here, folks. Sorry. I can't get I can't get rid of this thing. Go to your big <laughs> thing with this the uh, uh, slide on the side, on the left hand side, and click on the slide you want. Well, um we no, I, I can't get rid of the participant thing. Yeah. We'll click on the little ones on the bottom. Oh, yeah, down below. Click on those. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just go from, from and look at the screen. Okay, um, uh, uh, sorry for the delay. Okay, here, here's what I'm not going to talk about. Th these three topics all have historical angles. They're all in flux maybe it'll be uh, more uh, mature uh, next week uh, ukraine spring offensive what china wants um the uh, macron and ursula van der Leyen from the eu is uh, visiting uh, china so we'll have more to, to say about that and we might get a, a chance to talk about uh the history of water in the central valley i have a lot more to say about that but um, uh, right now, uh, I'll just content myself to say that the economist is going wild and saying that it's worse than you think, China and the U.S. And she, uh, they're saying that because their editor in chief, um, who uh, both Ramsey and I think is spectacular, um, she just got back uh, from a trip to China and she's the one uh, that dictated uh, what the uh, uh, cover uh, would be. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, but uh, Bob Oxenborough, is Bob here? Oh, no, he's not here. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, so uh, he was here earlier, um, but that's strange. Okay, well, uh, I'm presenting these slides specifically for him, so he's he's gonna have to. Um, uh, uh, see, I I, I sure hope so. You all heard me say I, I'm taping it, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they did. Uh, just now, for the second time. <laughs> okay. You heard it twice, right? The first time when and then I aborted, and then I said, "We're taping." Right. Well, it says yep. it's recording on okay, my screen. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, the, the, I've long been promising Spain goes uh, north. Bob Oxenberg uh, found some uh, uh, maps, uh, and I'm going to uh, address the uh, conundrum that that he presented. This is where we stopped uh, uh, last week with the. Um, uh, Pacific Current, and it's relevant uh, because 
uh, Spain wants to get imports back from uh, Manila, where all the China trade had been going on for uh, a long, long time. Um, and uh, they come back following the currents um, and uh, that brushes right along the California shore. But after they get across the Pacific, gosh, they, they really uh, need the uh, supply. So all of a sudden, California uh, becomes relevant. Uh, so they resupply on the California co coast, get down to Alcapoco or, or Panama, uh, reload and ship to, to Spain. Um, but the, the two more uh, theoretical motives um, uh, that explain Bob's maps uh, are uh, the myth of Queen Khalifa or Calafia, um, and also the mythical fabled Northwest Passage, which of course doesn't exist either. Um, and then here, here we are, uh, Queen Khalifa. This is from the Mark Hopkins uh, Hotel, um, uh, a mural uh, there. Uh, and she was a fictional queen of an island off uh, the west coast of the New World. Um, and he, she was made up by this guy named Montalvo uh, in 1510. So quite early, before Cor Cortez uh, conquers Mexico, right? Nine years before. And in the novel, he says there's ter this terrestrial paradise populated by dark-skinned women, Amazons, if you will, um, no men, uh, John, John, a land of great abundance. Um, and this Can you story, hear me, John? Yeah. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I need to sign back in, but I'm still seeing resisting current events. Yeah, me too. It's me not, too. We're not getting the rest of your slides. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, boy, oh boy. <laughs> okay. So click on those a couple times and see if they see it. Go backwards and forwards. No, no, I, I'm gonna I'm just gonna uh bail. Um Okay, what are y'all seeing now? Green Khalifa. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> the are Adventures you see, of Esplanade. Are you seeing one or two? <laughs> one. One, perfectly. Ah, music, <laughs> uh, uh, music to my ears. Um, now, uh, let's see if I can uh, advance. Um, so are, are you seeing uh, yeah. that uh, she had trained griffins? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> so uh, 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 one of the early chapters of this uh, fantastical novel is she goes and joins the Muslims who are uh, fighting in Constantinople. Now, that's a relatively recent fight, 60 years before he writes this novel, uh, The Ottomans Conquered Constantinople, as we talked about last week. And that was the reason the Silk Road uh, was never uh, no longer open. Now, in this story, uh, Calafia, she's taken prisoner by the Christians, uh, and she converts to Christianity, and she marries and returns with her army to, Cal to California and with her griffins uh, for further adventures. 
and and here here she is. Uh, she um, uh, uh, only kept men as they were necessary uh, uh, to keep <laughs> the uh, children coming. Uh, but uh, uh, those that weren't necessary, they practiced male infanticide. Okay. Oh man! But nevertheless, the conquistadors lapped it up. They loved this story, and this is documented. This wasn't just. Uh, 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 made up. Um, <laughs> okay, now, um, and this is from James Rawls. He's one of the books I'm recommending uh, if you're interested in reading along. Because California's actual history is so often resembled romantic uh, uh, fiction, it's kind of appropriate that they got it got its name from uh, a novel. Um, so life imitates art. So the art is the belief in, of the story is that California is an island. And Bob Oxenborough, when you watch this, this answers the question, why did this myth that California is an island persist uh, for so long? Um, and because it existed for 100 years after it was discovered to be uh, attached to the mainland, um, 150 years. And it tells us something about uh, uh, human nature, uh, the, the reluctance to give up myth. Um, the first European to actually step on California, albeit uh, Baja, was a mutineer. Uh, he was sent north and he mutinied and uh, took over the ship. And um, uh, apparently he and the crew thought uh, that they were going to meet uh, a, a Calafia. Um The guy's name was Fortune <laughs> Chemines. Um, and he went uh, uh, up along uh, the southern tip of uh, Baja uh, they named uh, the uh, uh, island California, of course. Uh, but uh, Ananis was killed in the clash of, with no, local natives. Uh, I'll note they were not Amazons. Uh, the survivors of, of this uh, uh, mutiny uh, returned to uh, 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 Mexico or New Spain uh, with the story of um, having found uh, black pearls on this uh, island, and uh, it should be um, uh, uh, explored more. So Cortez himself in 1535, uh, so mind you, that's 16 years after uh, he conquered Mexico, sails partway up the Gulf of of. Uh, uh, what, of Cortez, which is going to eventually be named for him. Um, and uh, he was looking for gold, but he was kind of interested in these uh, uh, black pearls. Well, the pearls were black uh, because the natives had barbecued oysters, and that's why <laughs> the pearls uh, uh, were black. Uh, the first uh, uh, map of California was drawn by Cortez himself. The big guy, um, he just got the, the southern tip of Baja and he didn't know much more what was north of there, but he certainly got the, the coast and all the uh, uh, villages there. Um, then he, he sent one of his minions, this is in 1539, uh, a, a guy named uh, Uloa, um, uh, up from Alcapoco, this was the last order that Cortez would give. This was his last hurrah. And it's appropriate. This guy goes up, finds out that the uh, the Sea of Cortez or the Gulf of Cortez uh, dead ends. Um, but does that stop the island myth? No, it, it lives on. Um, and uh, then uh, Cortez is ousted. Um, there's a new viceroy that's uh, uh, appointed. And now we uh, tap into one of our previous sessions on the, the Coronado expedition. This is the guy that uh, the viceroy that orders the Coronado exped uh, expedition. We've already talked about it. I won't, uh, in the interest of time, won't go over that again. 
but he commissions um, a uh, resupply ship to go up the Gulf of uh, Cortez um, and meet at the mouth of the Colorado River and resupply um, uh, uh, Coronado. So he commissions this guy, uh, Alarcon. And this is this guy is quite interesting. Uh, he, he is not your typical um, uh, uh, conquistador. He, but first of all, he fails to connect with uh, uh, Coronado. They miss each other here at the mouth of uh, the Colorado River. And he decides, well, what the heck? I've got these supplies. Let's sail up the Colorado. So he sails up the Colorado. And if he stepped off on the uh, west side, he would have been the first uh, Spaniard to take uh, to step in uh, California on what we would call Yuma, but who who knows what they called it then? Uh, uh, but uh, th there were Native uh, Americans there, and uh, Alarcon uh, was uniquely uh, kind. He he was uh, there'd been uh, of course all the stories that Coronado was 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 being uh, not kind. Uh, and he uh, decided that he was going to be like uh, uh, Cabeza de Baja uh, and uh, uh, tr treat the uh, natives kindly. And he, he made a study of it. He had an interest in anthropology, so he studied everything about it, even uh, their sexual cust uh, customs. Um, but uh, uh, there were occasional uh, skirmishes just because the natives were, were uh, suspicious. Now, the end story here is disputed. Uh, some say he disappeared on foot with a, an African uh, slave, which would have been following in the uh, footsteps of uh, De Vaca. Um, but we don't know for sure. But his map maker completed uh, the first map that listed the name California on it. Uh, and it was not an island. So they knew it was not an island. Nevertheless, um, uh, many maps were propagated uh, for 150 years uh, on that showed California as an island because they wanted to believe in Queen Califia um, and for other reasons. But you'll see uh, what the real California is shown, nothing, nothing. <laughs> it's terra incognito. Um, and so uh, the second uh, reason uh, myth is the myth of the uh, Northwest Passage. There is no Northwest Passage, not yet, not at that time. There will be in a, a few decades. Um, but there was the myth of the Annian Strait. That's what they called it. And huh, I, what's Ania? Uh, Ania uh, goes back to Greek times. Uh, and uh, he posited that there was a global symmetry um, uh, north to south. And because they'd, uh, Magellan had found an opening to the South Sea, it only made sense if there's this Greek notion of symmetry that there would be an uh, opening uh, in the north as well. Um, so uh, Ania was really the, the Greeks uh, uh, philosopher uh, Anaximander, and he created this map of, of the world uh, and he, he liked the symmetry of the Nile coming up from the south and what would what river would uh, this have been? This would have been the Dnieper, which is very much in the uh, news. Uh, it was called uh, something else then, um, coming into the the Black Sea. So if you had this kind of symmetry, it only made sense uh, that the New World would have the same symmetry. And you wonder if they believe such uh, nonsense then. What are we believing now that future uh, generations will call uh, nonsense. The other thing is just wishful thinking. 
if there is a Northwest Passage, boy, that would be convenient. That would really be convenient. We could get back to uh, Europe, Engl England, Britain, Spain. We could get back lickety split. Um, so this notion intrigued uh, Englishmen as well. And uh, Drake, uh, one of the reasons that he dallied here on the West Coast was he wanted to find uh, the Northwest Passage, which he called... Uh, 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 New Albion uh, means white cliffs, and 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 so that's what he was looking for. Here's a map, um, and you'll notice that uh, on this fanciful map is the uh, peninsula of uh, Brobingnag, which was a place in Gulliver's travels. Uh, interesting to see these connections. Just a quick uh, preview of Drake. He did land at Point Reyes. He was greeted by uh, the Miwoks, who apparently were into uh, self-flagellation and exhibitionism. Uh, we'll come back to this. But notice this brass plate way back on here. There's going to be a, a, a really funny story about uh, this when when we get to the 20th century California. Um, and uh, uh, for Bruce and uh, Connie, if she watches, uh, you get drawings of uh, the, the Miwok uh, 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 structures, which uh, uh, exist in Lafayette at the Miwok uh, village that uh, Ramsey's uh, wife, Janet, um, uh, and Bruce and Carol, and Barbara uh, have have worked on. Am I leaving anything out, uh, uh, those volunteers that are with us? Um, That's an interesting structure. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, he goes on and becomes uh, the first uh, explore, uh, 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 explorer to circumnavigate. And you say, well, wait a minute, Magellan did it first. No, no he died. <laughs> so uh, Drake was the first one that made it back uh, alive. Uh, so after he was through uh, at, uh, Point Reyes, uh, uh, off he went and, and continued uh, around the world. He could go across um, uh, this way because uh, he was not Catholic, right? The Pope had decided that uh, the Spanish had to stop here, and the Portuguese controlled this this half of the uh, 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 world. Uh, but but uh, Drake had no such uh, limits put on him, so he he finally uh, uh, was able to get uh, back home completely. This is an interesting guy. Um, the uh, Spain was worried about Drake. Um, and, and well, they should be because he, he was a pirate and he had raided the uh, Manila galleons uh, and had quite a haul. So it was such a haul that one reason he had to stop and point raise is that uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, ship was bulging uh, with uh, loot and, and it was uh, needed to be uh, refurbished. Uh, so the Spanish hired this Greek-born uh, uh, pilot, uh, sailor, if you will, uh, Ionis uh, Focus. Um, and uh, they said, uh, go and find the Northwest Passage. We know Drake's looking for it. So off uh, 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 Focus went, but note his Spanish name is Juan de Fuca. Does that sound familiar to anybody? For sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so Juan de Juan de Fuca um, makes it uh, onto maps today. Uh, there's a strait called uh, the Juan de Fuca Strait that goes along uh, the the uh, southern rim of Va Vancouver Island, uh, yeah. and uh, he found this. And he, he thought that this was the Northwest Passage, but he didn't bother or wasn't able to explore it all the way. And of course, he, he would have just gone around uh, 
Vancouver Island. Uh, did I hear somebody? No? Okay. Uh, but that's not all that's uh, named after Juan de Fuca. He's got a tectonic plate named after him. So <laughs> this pink is the remainder of the Farallon plate, which was here long, long before the Pacific plate met the North American plate. Now, the, the, they first really kiss down here in California, but the, there's a remnant of the Farallon plate that hasn't been pushed under, uh, subducted under the North American plate yet. There used to be a big pink plate that went all the way down here, and you can gather from the name Farallon Islands uh, that it certainly came all the way down here. Uh, but the Pacific plate uh, uh, squished it and pushed it under uh, the North American plate, subduction. Um, but it still exists up there, and it is an active plate. Um, this is the shows the process of subduction. Eventually, Juan de Fuca plate will disappear, like the well, along with the rest of the Farallon plate uh, down here, down south. But uh, as long as it's being pushed and going in, uh, it is uh, the, the, the subduction releases uh, huge forces from uh, uh, lower on, down below the plates that uh, create the uh, uh, volcanoes. And so uh, St. Uh, Helens here, Mount Hood. When we were up at Mount Shasta, we were told by the park ranger, I had my grandkids with me, that um, uh, the Shasta was going to uh, reawaken sometime because of the pressure of the Juan de Fuca plate. So Juan de Fuca was a, a scoundrel. Uh, 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 and uh, nevertheless, he, he lives through eternity um, as a straight and a plate. Uh, go figure. Um, there was a third person to circumnavigate, and he did it twice. Um, uh, he, uh, he did it completely once, but he died on his second time around, and that was Cook. Um, and uh, I, there's a story, and it involves a Hawaiian holiday on how he died. I'll get to that. Um, but before uh, his, on his second voyage, they took off uh, uh, to Hawaii where he died, was murdered actually. Um, he was um, looking for, guess, hold your breath, Northwest Passage. That's what he was supposed to find. Uh, and he, he went up to, to uh, uh, Vancouver Island um, and in Vancouver uh, it, itself, or in Victoria, the capital on Vancouver Island, um, uh, there's a statue of him. Uh, and uh, it, it was to, uh, put up in 1976 to uh, uh, mark the, the 20th anniversary of his departure from um, uh, Victoria. Um, and he followed along the northwest coast from Oregon all the way to the Bering Strait, showing there was no Northwest Passage. Um, and uh, one of, uh, in his Wikipedia page, uh, uh, it said, uh, Cook set a high standard of scientific exploration that was Cook, everything was, after Cook, everything was in uh, uh, detail. Um, and uh, welcome back, Homer. Um, and so Iko and I went uh, to Victoria as tourists in 2010, and I took this picture because I wanted to show that the uh, capital of um, uh, uh, Vancouver, BC, uh, is in Victoria, and it's behind the uh, statue uh, of Cook. Um, and uh, this is in August uh, 2020. Um, now, times have, are changing. 
uh, just in the uh, 10 years since we were there. Now he's splattered with uh, uh, red paint uh, to commemorate the missing and murdered indigenous women. So off we go. Um, and here in year later, he's gone. He's gone. He The statue has uh, been taken down except for his left leg or the bottom part of his left leg um, and smeared uh, with red. But uh, again, and along the theme of the uh, in, uh, indigenous uh, uh, women who died at uh, the hands of the Europeans, uh, here, here are red dresses uh, that replaced his uh, statue. And uh, now they're all around as, as protest. So uh, that's the story uh, of, of Cook. Um, three years later, Cook uh, arrives on the Big Island uh, on the e uh, east side, uh, where Kona, right? And if, if you've been to Kona and you've gone scuba diving, um, you could encounter a little island with a memorial to Cook. And on that uh, memorial, you learn that there was a Hawaiian uh, village just about 300 yards uh, 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 to the south. Um, and Cook and, uh, and his crew arrived right in the middle of a Hawaiian holiday. And he was welcomed um, and uh, feted and it is said that they were very generous with the, their women uh, for these sailors who'd been out at sea. Um, and the, uh, there was a lot of drinking. It was a big holiday. Uh, and then uh, uh, they decided, okay, uh, it, uh, it's time to leave. Uh, they, they took their leave and they got out to sea and they saw that the ship was barely seaworthy, uh, that uh, uh, nails had been extracted by the Hawaiians because they didn't have metal. Um, and so they turned around, uh, come back. I don't know if they were gonna get the more nails, but they certainly needed more provisions since the, the ship wasn't seaworthy. Uh, and they confronted the chief well, the holiday was over. And so uh, they weren't welcomed the second time. Uh, they thought, uh, you, you know, what? you've got your nerve, you're coming back here uh, and asking for uh, those little uh, metal things. Um, and uh, uh, Cluck, uh, a leader that he was, uh, led the, the battle and was uh, killed in, in battle. Um, and uh, that's why he only went around the world once. Uh, he went around one and a half times, let's say. Um, all right, Northwest Passage uh, soon. Um, don't stop at the Bering Strait. Well, I guess that is the Bering Strait. Uh, that'll be open as well uh, at certain times of year, all this and uh, uh, China and Russia are both really, really happy about this um, uh, uh, geopolitically, uh, Northwest Passage. All right, so uh, how am I doing for time? Uh, five minutes, three. But uh, what time did I really start? I think you should keep going. Okay, let me, can I keep going so that I'm uh, talking for an hour instead of flailing? Yes. Okay, uh, so God. I want to talk a little bit more about the history of uh, water in the Central uh, Valley. Um, and uh, we're working our way to uh, uh, Cabrillo in 1542. So that's our, our destination. destination. But I really want to, I discovered some interesting stuff about water uh, history. Um, and uh, I, I hope uh, uh, that Bob Oxenborough 
uh, will see uh, the, the tape to, so he knows I made use of his maps. I try to make use of uh, everything you guys uh, send me. J uh, Jim Tysel has sent me some stuff on uh, the, the water uh, as well. Uh, so in including this map, uh, we've gone over this uh, uh, last time. I'll just review the basic stats. Uh, uh, Tulare Lake, four times the size of Lake Tahoe, largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi, third largest freshwater lake in the entire United States. But it is sh shallow. It was shallow, 50 feet at its uh, uh, deep deepest. I want you to notice the uh, King King's River. Okay, that's going to play in our story just south of uh, between halfway between Fresno and, and Visalia. Okay, Kings River. Just keep that that in mind. Um, and uh, there, there's a hero to, that I want to talk about, uh, a guy named Don Cameron. So I always try to find a story, and the story of Don Cameron is quite interesting. So uh, he lives on the Kings River. Um, but before we get to Don, let's let's go back in time and just review uh, the Native Americans here uh, were called Yukats. Um, now, Connie, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, told us that a loney uh, is a, a general term that uh, includes tribes like Miwoks. Well, Yukats is the same thing. It's an umbrella uh, name for a lot of different uh, tribes, but they um, made good use of uh, uh, the uh, Tulare Lake. Um, and this is a sketch of all the different tribes. So way too detailed. Um, I'll just point you to the Chumash. We know the, the Chumash, right? We've been focusing on the coastal tribes because they're the ones the Spanish are going to be encountering once we get to Cabrillo. And then the Miwoks. So uh, Miwoks, um, more up north, Chumash in the south. Do you remember the Chumash were the first tribe in the Channel uh, Islands? Um, and then uh, scattered here are... Uh, uh, native, other Native Americans. Here's the the uh, Tulare Lake um, and and uh, the different uh, water flows uh, from the Sierras that that uh, create it. Uh, so it's preserved uh, through Spanish times. It's the Americans. It's the Americans that uh, uh, drain it. Um, and so uh, here they are uh, at Lakeside in 1870, uh, 1883, uh, they've built uh, schooners. Um, uh, then uh, come the steamships and there's eight ports along uh, the uh, edges of uh, Tulare Lake, eight ports. And then here come the cowboys um 1884 so there's going to be some grazing here uh, as well um i think some there were some uh, uh spanish ranchos uh, here but uh we're uh, we're we're in the american period now also i want to emphasize i thought this was a a good way to do it that uh the valley is a uh, part of the pacific flyway and you can imagine if Tulare Lake would be a, a, a great uh, stopover place for birds migrating um, uh, and the, the other uh, uh, wetlands all along before uh, Americans uh, drained it. This guy uh, has his uh, share of ducks, uh, duck hunting. Okay, but then the real problem comes- Go with, ducks! Hello. Go Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Uh, it's Jim Tysall, the uh, uh, irrepressible Oregon uh, 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 
basketball, football, and uh, baseball fan, men and women. Thank you, Jim. I, wait, where's your quacker? Track and field. <laughs> oh, yeah, track and field. Yeah, that's a big one, especially track and field. Sorry, I forgot that, Jim. Uh, you know, <laughs> his duck call is never far away. <laughs> I'll have to bring it back for Madsen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mark Madsen is going to be... Uh, 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 or no, no, the coach. Um, uh, what's the coach? The coach of the Stanford coach is going to be uh, has moved to Cal to try to resuscitate their the basketball. So uh, back back to uh, uh, the real topic, which is water. So the problem here is channelizing rivers. So uh, t uh, turning river bottoms into concrete so that all you don't lose any of the water for agriculture. Um, and um, this is the map I've shown before, but I want to look at it now in more detail. I, the first time I showed it, I said, hey, uh, there are four kinds of governmental uh, uh, water projects. There's federal, state, uh, uh, combo state and federal and local. Um, the other thing I want to uh, emphasize are the squiggly lines going all around the Central Valley. And you notice the top half is blue, but right about here, about the junction of the top two thirds and the bottom one third, uh, it turns from blue to green. What, is, what does that mean? Well, the green is the Tulare subbasin. And basically, this notes um, a kind of a continental divide, if you will. Water north of here tends to flow north to the delta. Uh, uh, the, so the blue watershed is uh, the northern delta watershed. Uh, the green at the lower third um, is, is uh, the Tulare subbasin, and it doesn't flow anywhere. It stays and forms Lake Tulare, which which is uh, 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 landlocked, and so it just sits there and evaporates. It doesn't flow anywhere. It's trapped uh, in Tulare Lake. All right, so this map uh, uh, means a lot more to me now. Um, and this just uh, sort of shows what, what the problem is. Uh, uh, before you started channelizing the, the water, um, it, it, it would uh, flow into the ground, it would percolate through, and it, it would uh, flow out. And some of it uh, would percolate uh, down to the to the aquifer, um, and some would go through and above ground in streams. But once you you start channeling, uh, now you've got a, a problem, especially if you start pumping. So you're pumping from the aquifer to these new wonderful agricultural products that feeds the world or 40% of the world or whatever the statistic is. Uh, but uh, 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 you're, you're draining uh, the aquifer. Um, and so uh, what happens then is even deeper water starts uh, bubbling up and it's got some salt in it. So uh, salinization uh, can happen. So real problem, not just with the quantity of water, but the quality uh, of, of water. Um, all right. Uh, so um, how am I doing on time? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, keep going. The 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 audience uh, uh, in attendance here says keep going. So um, uh, uh, let let me know if you've got to leave, and and we'll wind up. Uh, so uh, there's a uh, an author named Mark Arex, and he wrote a book called Dreamt Land, which Ico has read about the water wars. Um, 
but at he first, if you want a short version, uh, wrote a uh, long piece um, for the California Sunday um, uh, dot com. Um, and uh, he um, uh, created a community, uh, basically Lost Hills, and turbocharged the pumping of the aquifer. And this is the, the story that Arax uh, uh, reports on first in this long piece, uh, which you can get, um, or, or you could actually buy his, his uh, subsequent book based on this long piece called uh, uh, Dreamt uh, Land. Uh, and he creates this community called uh, uh, Lost Hills. Uh, Resnick uh, does. Resnick, I, I've got a hero in the water wars and I've got a villain. And I, I think it's fair to say, uh, maybe not intentionally, but he certainly played a big role in the dropping of uh, the water table. Is that fair, Iko? Yes, Iko shaking her head. So this is uh, the book. Uh, and if you wanted a, a kind of goofy dramatization of it, um, uh, watch, the uh, the lawyer series called Goliath, starring Billy Bob Thornton, uh, season three is devoted to uh, uh, Resnick's story, loosely based on on Resnick's uh, story, um, and Resnick um, is the biggest farmer in the United States, uh, and. Uh, Eric said, uh, uh, discovered this, was amazed at how long he was able to keep that hidden and how much um, Resnick has transformed Southern uh, 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 Central Valley, the, uh, the, the, the part uh, with uh, Tulare Lake. Um, and he's uh, essentially set up a, a kingdom which he calls originally kingdom from dust. So Resnick said, hey, you got a lot of good land here. You just don't have water. Let's pump it from the aquifer. So he created uh, uh, this community, Lost Hills, which you've passed very close to if you've ever gone on the five. So just to orient you, here's, here's Kettleman. That's a familiar uh, name. So this is uh, five coming down. So south of uh, uh, Kettleman City is uh, uh, Lost Hills. Um, and uh, here's what it looks like from, from the air. And you can tell that it's got ch uh, channelized uh, uh, water for sure. And here are, are uh, fields right near the settlement, more fields across the channel. Um, the aqueduct just outside of uh, Lost Hills. Um, almonds on the left, pistachios on the right. They both need a lot of water. I think almonds needs even the most. Um, and uh, here is uh, uh, the uh, airport. Um, anybody know why the uh, word wonderful is written on the uh, airstrip? landing strip um, palm wonderful very good very good um so palm wonderful uh so that gives you a clue what some of these uh orchards are um and resnick was interviewed uh in his mansion in beverly hills he does not live uh in the valley never has it's just his idea and his financing. Um, and he admits that he's a carpetbagger, uh, that the people that live in the valley, they go back four generations, but not me. Um, and this is the story that's told in the Billy Bob Thornton Goliath series, exactly the, the same kind of um, uh, characters with the same backstories. And especially the wife, 
She is the brains behind uh, uh, Wonderful, uh, Palm Wonderful, and a lot of other wonderful things. And the, her care, she is characterized not too sympathetically in the, the TV series. Um, and uh, it, it, you've, you've seen this stuff on the, on the uh, grocery shelves. Um, and, but it's, it starts here in the orchards, the pomegranates and processed. Um, and uh, the, the character in, in the TV series does exactly the same thing. Uh, uh, creates parks, schools, uh, uh, advertising on, on the water tanks. Um, this is the local almond and pistachio plant north of Lost Hills. It's the size of seven super Walmarts. Um, this is the workers' uh, trailer park, not too shabby. Um, at least they've got a, a, a little variety in the center. Um, and this is uh, the uh, utility, utility district building. So this is supposed to be the public oversight. Well, in the TV series, it's hilarious. It's, it's in the, uh, the, the oversight, the public uh, 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 sector is represented by a building just this small that is shared uh, as an office for the secretary in Palm Wonderful. Uh, and when Billy Bob Thornton goes in, he, he meets her and says, I've, I, I, I'm here to talk to the water district. And she get up from, gets up from her desk uh, in Palm Wonderful and walks down the hall and sits <laughs> in her desk in the water district. Wow. <laughs> so just giving you a, 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 a very uh, stark visual on how these things work. So um, pistachio uh, harvest. Um, and uh, uh, Resnick says, look, I don't have any guilt. I've done no big wrong in my life. Uh, anyone, not, not one that would cause me to have any, well, maybe just a little guilt, but that's Jewish. I thought that was refreshingly honest. Um, the Resnicks do try to do good. This is a new school complex uh, that will educate uh, 1,800 uh, Stuart, students. Um, so, uh, 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 Stuart Resnick, he gambled and he won for many years, but uh, 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 the drought looks like it was going to end everything. But has it? What, what's the meaning of this um, uh, flooding that we have and the rec recreation of uh, Tulare Lake? So this uh, riverbed isn't going to be uh, dry. Um, and... Uh, uh, he thought he could ride out the drought, and maybe he has. Maybe he has. So uh, that story uh, will be, uh, this is the place I'm going to stop. I, I can tell you more. The author of the, uh, the book uh, wrote an a, a, uh, article for the New York Times in January. So next week, I'll, I'll tell you about that. Um, and then uh, we'll go on uh, and talk about Cabrillo. Cabrillo, uh, and that'll, that'll take us to Spain in, in 1542, uh, about the same time um, that uh, uh, they were exploring the, the Colorado uh, River uh, uh, and taking Spanish boats up the Colorado. All right, so I'll uh, I'll take questions, and I, I, I want to apologize for all the crazy stuff at the beginning. Um, I tried to do something new, and I'm learning that I shouldn't do that. Thanks a lot. It was great. Okay. Where do you find these great slides? Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I, just just reading and seeing what I'm interested in and th thinking, hey, I bet you uh, th there's a, an image that's available and searching for it. A lot of the slides uh, 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 that I showed today are from that that article. 
um, that Eric uh, wrote and oh. that uh, the series is based on. Those aren't, uh, those were all really uh, j just from that l uh, long piece written by Eric's. What was that? Oh. So, John, um, my audio blacked out for a minute. So, what was published in the New York Times in January? So Eric's, the guy who wrote the, the long piece uh, that I quoted from today, I think that was from 2016, and who then wrote the subsequent book, uh, I was really curious what he, uh, uh, what he has to say about the flooding. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I looked and I looked. I had to uh, search a couple of uh, uh -oh. uh, different... Uh, uh, vendors, uh, but finally uh, came up with uh, the the New York Times article. He there was something more recent in in the Fresno Bee, but it was behind a paywall. Uh, I, I think I'm actually going to pay before next week. Uh, but the New York Times from uh, two months ago, when it was clear that uh, uh, we were going to be dealing with flooding, uh, I he had some interesting things to say, and I'll. I'll kick off uh, next week uh, with that. Thank um, you. Yeah. What, was that, what was that book you had, Harold? Well, I was going to say there's another book that uh, Mark Erex wrote in conjunction with a guy named Rick Wartsman about, about another king of California, J.G. Boswell, big oh, yeah. farmer back in the day. Yeah, yeah, he's he's going to be. I've got uh, slides about Boswell. Uh, and Eric's talks about him in the New York Times article. So just real quick, he, he's a Southerner uh, who uh, uh, 100 years ago uh, suffers from the boll weevil in the South. And so he comes to Central Valley and starts planting cotton, <laughs> which he uses a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so uh, Corcoran... Uh, the city that you've seen pictures of that's right on the edge of the Tulare Lake is the cotton capital of California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also a security prison. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Nice too. Yeah. Oh, I got to run. Thank you, John. Sure. Any other questions, comments? I, Duck calls. I, yeah, it was Pima cotton, I think, and uh, and they may have a rough year <laughs> with their cotton production. Um, uh, yeah. The uh, the Russians and the Chinese may benefit from the Northwest Passage, but perhaps even more the Canadians. Well, fair enough. Sure. Okay. Okay, bye. See Thank you. Next you. Week. Bye. See you all next week. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.